Hello, hello, my loves. Welcome. We are going to take a little tour around my home. I have been wanting to film this Halloween decor tour video for at least two weeks. My Halloween decor has been officially up since probably like the very end of August. I have been slowly adding a couple things here and there. I have done a little bit of Halloween hunting in small doses to some stores that were putting out their stuff a little bit later. And yeah, the, it's like the decorating just kind of doesn't ever end, at least, at least throughout September. And then I think once September is done, the whole month of October, the home is pretty much as is. So I went ahead and did a little tour. I'm going to do a voiceover because my hubby is sleeping and I didn't want to disrupt him and like be walking around everywhere. Um, so it will be a voiceover and hopefully I will be able to kind of share with you guys where I got things, why I put things where I did, what, what, what I was going with my theme. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the little tour. And once that is over, we will meet back here and have a little spooky chit chat. All right, I'll see you guys soon. Hi guys, welcome to the entryway of my home. <laughs> and we are going to do a tour of the space. The entryway just has a simple table with a couple little decor pieces, my Cracker Barrel haunted house, the radio. You can kind of see a little sneak peek of the bats. <laughs> And I also have my homemade wreath. I made this one earlier in the summertime. It didn't come out quite as cute as I wanted it, but it'll do. And now let's look at the whole house as a whole. Uh, most of my decor is here in the living room, a little bit in the hallway. I did spider webbing on my photos. I felt like it gave it that little haunted touch. And this is my entertainment center, my most favorite part of decorating. I feel like that is like the centerpiece of my home and it just came out so freaking cute. I love all the ghosties. Everything just fit perfectly. The color scheme, I was so proud of myself. Um, the ghosties, so we have my headless horseman, my little headless bust, um, it just some of my vintage ghosts, random ghosts I found at the store, Vons. Um, I have just ghosties everywhere. <laughs> I love the ones when they hold the pumpkins. I think those are the cutest. Um, and there is one of the Cracker Barrel ghosts I was able to snag this year. I actually got two. The other one's right over there. And the Headless Horseman. I painted the pumpkin. I also spray painted him black. And I think he came out really, really nice. And there's my Michael Myers ghost. I mean, pumpkin. <laughs> he lights up. My other Cracker Barrel ghost. Um, and here's more of my, that's the Ross ghost that was so popular this year. That was an eBay ghost I picked up a couple years back and the Walmart one with the witch hat and another Vaughn's ghost, another, uh, Joanne's ghost. And this one, my mom gifted to me. She gave it to me. That ghost has been in my world since I was born. Um, and then there's the headless horseman that fell and we had to literally re-glue his feet. And this is one of the remotes that turns on some of the tea lights, as you can see. This makes decorating so much easier. I don't have to go in and turn on each and every little piece. <laughs> so you just go in, turn them on, you could turn them off. It's just super, super easy. I totally recommend getting the remote, the battery operated ones. Here's a little ghosty hanging from my lamp, and these are my pride and joys. Um, the one to the right is from TJ Maxx. The one to the left is Michael's, and I had to get them last minute, literally meant to be. Here is a chair. This used to belong to my dad, <laughs> and I have my little ghosty pillows with the haunted house pillow that I picked up this year. So excited for that. It's my little ghosty family, and here's Starla and Luna's artwork. <laughs> This is the recliner, Hus hubby's is on the left, mine is on the right, skeleton is on the right, blankets to cuddle up with, it's just a cozy little setup when we watch our movies. Um, and then this is the setup where I put the haunted, little haunted houses. Here's my little table. Um, 
I think it came out cute. It's really simple. I kind of want to do more with it next year, though. <laughs> but let's have a look over here at my haunted house. Um, I just love the setup here, too. I think this is super, super cute. I also added the bats last minute. Um, these are all Michael's haunted houses. I collect them. Repainted a couple of those, as you could see from previous videos. Um, there's another headless horseman I found last minute at a Home Goods. Ghosty lights. I thought that was kind of cute to add there. That tree, he actually lights up and talks, but I had him off for the video. There is my knockoff Cracker Barrel ghost <laughs> and just a couple other ghosties that I found. Those, um, the ones that look similar to the one my mom gave me, I found them on eBay. And some candle ghosties, ghosties galore. <laughs> now, welcome to my kitchen. Um, this is also something new I tried, which is decorating the tops of my cabinets. And I think it came out so cute. So let's have a look. Let's start with the island. Uh, that's my cookie jar ghost from Ross. And I freaking love it. The salt and pepper shakers too. There's a little haunted house salt and pepper shaker and a pumpkin. And that is a ghosty mug in the back. Really, really cute. I also just picked this up today. <laughs> it's a tray, a ghosty tray, and it's perfect to carry the remotes that actually turn on the decor pieces at the top of my cabinets, which is a lifesaver. And let's do the table. Very simple, I keep it simple. Don't really want too much going on there. My coffee. <laughs> and yeah, I love this little piece. That's a, that's a recycled candle. And I just put fake flowers in it. And here is my haunted village, some haunted houses, my Cracker Barrel ghost, like a little lava lamp thing. And that little crow I picked up at Target. And then down here is my Limax spooky village. Everything lights up. Super, super cute. I love it. And then that ghost in the back with the, I mean, the pumpkin in the back with the witches. I just picked that up today too. I got that one at Walgreens. And then below is my village from Target. So you can find these at the Target um, Halloween section. Really simple, super cute, and very affordable. So you can make a little village. I have like a little cemetery, <laughs> pumpkin patch, my witch, she sings and dances and Beetlejuice, that's a cat. Well, it's actually for dogs. It's a doggy door, but we don't use it, obviously. And my mom gave me that. It's a metal skeleton from back in the day when she used to decorate. And then let's go into the kitchen. This is my coffee station. I just put up that mug tree. It is so freaking cute. It just really puts everything together. Um, we have little stirs for the hot coffees. And I also just picked up that pumpkin mug. This is my haunted house cookie jar from Joann's. I put the K-cup pods in there. Perfect. Don't mind the cat bowls in the back. <laughs> um, my haunted mugs, my spooky mugs, Halloweeny mugs, 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 mugs galore. I just, oh, they make me so happy. <laughs> I pick a different one every morning. This is the Keurig, my Halloween uh, mug, and then this is from Bath and Body Works, a haunted house. It lights up, super cute. You just have to plug it in. I don't put the scents in there. I just use it strictly for the lights. My little ghosty soap dispenser from Ross, and a little peek of the top of the cabinets. Some more. I wanted to do mostly pumpkins on the tops of the cabinets, like a little pumpkin patch in the kitchen. And here are my, uh, what is it called? <laughs> Poison apples. <laughs> and the little ghost plate from Target. I use it to put my little utensils on. My pumpkin, so cute. I think I got that from Joann's. And yeah, just this is the whole look of the house, you guys. So spooky, haunted, magical, Halloween-y. Here's the hallway. So I put the bats up on the wall and I thought it came out so cute. I ended up having to pin them down because the tape was not sticking. I put pumpkin pails to kind of look like a little walkway of a pumpkin patch and witchy hats at the top and spider webbing on the photos. I wanted it to feel like you're walking through a little haunted cave, the witch's lair. <laughs> 
and it is just such a vibe. I really think the spider webbing on the photos is just the perfect touch. I love this photo of my husband and I. It was an engagement photo, but it literally looks like from the 1800s. <laughs> and witchy hats and more ghosts. I mean, not ghosts. Oh my gosh, more bats. And my witch, one of my favorite decor pieces from this year, my witch, she, her cauldron lights up. I have her stacked on little books, those, those like storage books from Ross and Home Goods. And my other witchy that I got and that pumpkin, he talks, he's creepy. <laughs> this is a vintage mirror that we picked up. My mom picked up years ago and she gave it to me, put spider webbing on it and it just looks so perfect. And yeah, that's the hallway space. I love it. it. Just really sets the tone for the rest of the house. And that is my house, you guys. What do you think? Let me know. It's very simple. Oh, it just makes me happy. I love it. Okay, my loves. So I wanted to have a little spooky chit chat. I wanted to talk about a couple things. I want to do a little haul video of decks that came into my collection this spooky season. So I think I'm going to hold off on showing you guys a couple of those decks, but I do want to show one deck in particular, and I really want to just share about it and talk about it because this deck has really just surprised me and I'm absolutely in love with it. I don't remember. I think I saw this deck in a photograph on Instagram. I think someone po put it on a post and it came up at, as one of those re recommended, recommended posts. I just remember looking at the cards and I was like, ooh, that's really pretty. I was actually attracted to the artwork and I wanted to kind of look deeper into it. So I got the title of the deck, did a Google search and discovered the Witches Through History Grimoire and Oracle deck. Oh my gosh, I don't know where I have been. <laughs> because you guys remember when I do my um, my fall decks when I was showing you guys the ones I'm working with my spooky decks. And I remember mentioning I don't have any witchy decks. So a couple of the decks that I added to my collection are witch themed, because I feel like I need more witch decks, right? And this one just completely has taken me by surprise. And I really love it. It's absolutely beautiful. And just right off the bat, I will tell you guys, if you are into witches, if you're into the history of witches, if you are into spooky decks, creepy decks, dark theme decks, shadow work decks, this is a really, really, really good one. You're going to like it. My only gripe, the only thing that I am just sad about is there's only 25 cards, <laughs> literally 25 cards for spiritual, magical, and meditative practice. I wish this had tons more. I really do. I really, really do. They could have done so much more with it. I'm just a little bit sad. But the other thing I will say too is the guidebook is absolutely ridiculously amazing. This is a guidebook. It is a chunky chunk, okay? This guidebook, and it is absolutely gorgeous. Everything is, the pages are full color. It's, it's beautiful. So the book itself, if, you, if you're not interested in reading tarot cards, or actually it's oracle cards. If you're not interested in the oracle thing and, you know, you could really care less about the cards, the book itself is worth buying the deck, okay? So... The book goes into literally the history of witches. You are introduced to various archetypes. Um, you are introduced to various topics and themes surrounding witches and witchcraft throughout history. It is so interesting. And I have not even really given it a read yet because I literally just got this the other day. But look at this first chapter. What is a witch? Look at this artwork. Isn't that beautiful? What is a witch, right? So um, the first, I would say probably 80%, 75% of this book is all history of witches 
and beautiful artwork beautiful 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 illustrations and then look at this oh my gosh the the suffering of salem look at that Oh my God, so gorgeous. And then you go to the end, literally it's like just a few pages because it's only 25 cards. You go to the Oracle parts about which is through history Oracle deck, how to read the Oracle cards. So it shares how to read the Oracle cards. And then all you get for the, the cards, like the descriptions is a little paragraph. Now, at first I was kind of sad about that because I was like, wait, we have this gorgeous book. <laughs> We have all of this juiciness and you're telling me this has nothing to do with the cards. I'm sure it does, but it, but really <laughs> this is all you get for the cards. Okay. So some people will be upset about that. Some of you probably won't care. I personally don't care because, and I will show you next, but the cards pretty much speak for themselves. Okay. So anyways, you go through the cards. Each of the cards is labeled by one of the elements. So you have earth, air, fire, water, and spirit. It just kind of goes into a couple other things and whatever. So really good book. This is literally, I have this on my TBR now to read this as just like a literal, you know, a, a leisure read. Oh my God, what a magical, what a magical book. So let's look at the cards. They sit in this little pocket, right? And like I said, there's only 25 cards. <laughs> so they are like this size. They're probably, they're, they're about the length of my hand. They're probably, I would say, larger, longer, longer than standard tarot deck size, but very beautiful. And they are about, they're not super thin, but you know, they will leave a little bit of a, a bow if you shuffle them pretty good. <laughs> Card backs are beautiful. You have snakes, little stars. The colors are beautiful. It's just a really beautiful deck. And then the imagery, if there's borders, it's like a creamy border. You have the gorgeous artwork. And then you have at the bottom the name. So some of them are witches. So you have the name Agnes Waterhouse. So you have the name of the witch, and then you have three little keywords, intense emotion, culpability, morality, lavender. So you have some herbs here, lavender, rest, calm, positivity. And at the top of the card, it will tell you which element is associated with that. So like I said, you have the owl, wisdom, spirituality, dreams. You really don't need the guidebook when you have these little keywords. And if you already read with your intuition, you maybe you have prior knowledge of herbs or prior knowledge of spirit animals. You really don't need a guidebook for it. So that's why I say it, it was a little bit disappointing to not see more for the cards in the book, but you don't really need it. <laughs> the Raven, intelligence, deftness, inner depths. So I've already used this deck in a couple readings for um, a client and it came out spot on, at least in my, at least in my opinion, it was spot on reading um, and very accurate <laughs> and very spot on for the question or the nature of the question that my client was asking. So it was really, really good. And I am very, very excited to be working with this deck. It's beautiful. The colors kind of stay very cohesive, very blues and reds, purples, just a really beautiful deck. We have Cersei here. <laughs> so yeah, you get a, a lot of very well-known witches throughout history. Witch of Endor. We have the Horned God. Elizon Device, 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 I don't know. I'm probably totally not pronouncing that right. The Toad, The Hound, Isabel Gaudi, The Broom, Mother Shipton, Wand, Amulet. But yeah, really amazing deck. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So I definitely wanted to share that with you guys. I was really excited to kind of show you and just talk about it because it really took me by surprise. Where can you find this deck? I ordered mine on, on Amazon, so you could totally easily get it from there. I have not seen this at Barnes & Noble. 
And I go to Barnes & Noble pretty regularly. I would say I go at least once a month. The price is $22. So I haven't seen it at Barnes & Noble. I don't know if other bookstores around the States um, that sell decks maybe will carry it. But Barnes & Noble, at least in my location, I've never seen it. So definitely do your homework, do your search on it. But what a beautiful deck. And yeah, I totally recommend I have to still read the guidebook, so I don't know if there's anything that would potentially be, you know, like uncomfortable or an unpopular opinion or something that, you know, would be offensive. I haven't, I didn't really, I haven't read the book, so I can't say, but just by first glance and my first impression of it, I would definitely say this is something I do want to work with. I will be working with, and I look forward to reading the guidebook. It's so magical. It just feels amazing. So <laughs> I just thought I would share that with you guys. Anyways, I will definitely be back for more videos. I have, like I said, I have a deck reveal, like a haul video I plan on doing. And then I'm going to be going through a couple of my really Halloweeny decks um, for like a show and tell because I know some of you guys wanted to see that. And then probably, probably another book talk once I get through another book or two, I am actually very proud of myself for how many books I have gone through this month. I very much surprised myself because like I said, I could be a slow reader. Sometimes it takes me two plus weeks. Sometimes it takes me a whole month <laughs> just to get through one book. And we're only on what today's the 16th, the 17th, 17 days into the month. And I've already read, I think this is my fourth book. So I've been doing really good. <laughs> so anyways, my loves, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for going along with me on a tour of my haunted home. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys in my next video very, very soon. Bye, my loves.